breaking news tonight. Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested in a Manhattan hotel this evening after a grand jury indicted the music mogul. His attorney tells CNN that he is currently being processed. The charges are unclear as of this moment. Do you think Diddy would take some people down with him if he get arrested? Oh, my man. Come on. His daddy was a rat. Hold on, look at you. I know this ain't got nothing to do with her, but I'm going to tell his story. It was this gangster, right? He said, when you go there, kill the father and kill his son. And the guy said, his son is only a baby four years old. He said, his father was a rat and he going to grow up to be a rat too. It ain't no way that he going to go down, you understand, and not take nobody with him. Sean Love Combs, widely known as P. Diddy, is now dealing with the biggest claims and accusations of his life involving blackmail, human trafficking, drug dealing, and violent acts. These accusations are coming in when the artist had grounded his foot in society, famous, well-respected, and living his best life, having accumulated more wealth than you can imagine. Vegas, love, love, love! Love, love, love! Love, love, love! Okay, there we go. How did he become so successful at a young age, even with so much trouble in his life? Vista Stories investigates and shares the story of this well-known music star, from his early beginnings to a future that seems to be ending on a difficult note. You'll also discover more about his past work, businesses, how he made and spent his money, relationships, problems with his label records, the endless lawsuits, and his current wealth. Sean Combs was born on November 4, 1969, in Harlem, New York City. During this time, his father, Melvin Earl Combs, worked in the U.S. Army, while his mother, Janice Combs, worked as a teacher's assistant and also as a model balancing both roles. However, Sean didn't have the luxury of growing up beside his dad, as he passed away when Sean was only three years old. Sean's father, while working as an army officer, got involved with a notorious drug kingpin, Frank Lucas. If you are a fan of movies, you will recognize Frank Lucas as the character portrayed by Denzel Washington in the film American Gangster. As the saying goes, once you walk the path of a drug dealer, the shadows of death are always close behind. No matter how far you run, you can never escape its grasp. Melvin Combs would soon be taken away, having been misidentified as a rat by gang members. This means he was wrongly accused of snitching on the gang. But Sean, being young at that time, only grew up knowing his father had been killed in an accident. This was the narrative his mother had fed him all along, fearing that her son might follow in his father's footsteps. Later, when Sean was 12, his mother moved to New York to live in Mount Vernon, a small suburb at the time. Janice, being a single mom, had to work several jobs to support her family. She worked hard to educate her kids, with Sean attending Mount St. Michael Academy, an all-boys Catholic school, while his sister Keisha attended Little Angels Academy. During his time in school, he was proactive and played football, even leading his team to win the division title in 1986. However, Sean was a hot-tempered student, and it was during those days that he earned the nickname Puffy because he would yell and shout when angry, a behavior that his peers saw as puffing, hence the nickname Puff Daddy. Daddy! I'm a savage! Year later, Sean graduated from school, and after staying home for two years, he left his family to join Howard University in Washington, D.C., majoring in business. In his second year, he secured an internship at Uptown Records in New York City. He would soon find playing the two roles difficult and had to choose one. In 1990, he decided to drop out of the university and focus on his job. After dropping out of the university, Sean started working with Uptown Records for the better part of the 90s. He actually performed big roles, developing big names like Jodeci and Mary Blige. Consequently, the record promoted him to vice president in only one year. At this moment, I want to remember the famous quote by C.S. Lewis, failures are finger posts on the road to achievement, because something tragic would happen in 1991. Sean and the late rapper Heavy D organized a charity event following a basketball game at the City College of New York. York. The party was intended to be a celebration, but it ended in violence, highlighting the dangers and unpredictability of nightlife, especially in urban settings during that time. Although Combs and Heavy D were not directly responsible for the violence, the incident had a significant impact on their reputations and the hip-hop community as a whole. Sean would then face multiple wrongful death and personal injury lawsuits, and following all these, Uptown Records fired him from his job. But as Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts.
Sean launched his own record label, Bad Boy Entertainment, in 1991. To ensure the label grew rapidly, they signed major artists such as the Notorious B.I.G. and Faith Evans, who would propel the label by releasing hit albums and viral singles throughout the 90s. Gaining this popularity, Bad Boy Entertainment became a major player in the music industry at that time. Soon, the devil would strike again when the label became entangled in the infamous East Coast versus West Coast rap feud, primarily between Bad Boy and Suge Knight's Death Row Records, which Tupac Shakur was a member of. What started as friendly competition soon turned into a heated rivalry that captivated the music industry and fans alike. The tension between the East Coast and West Coast hip-hop scenes intensified, particularly after the Source Awards in 1995, where artists and fans were split over loyalty to either Bad Boy in New York or Death Row in California. Tragically, this rivalry took a devastating turn after the 1995 Source Awards, which would foresee the deaths of Tupac Shakur and the Notorious B.I.G. in 1996 and 1997, respectively. Their untimely deaths shocked the world and left a lasting impact on hip-hop, marking an end to a fierce era of competition. After the tragic death of the Notorious B.I.G. in 1997, Sean Combs, also known as Puff Daddy, experienced a surge in his career as a rapper. His debut single, Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, became a massive hit, topping the Billboard Hot 100 for several weeks. Following this success, he released I'll Be Missing You, a heartfelt tribute to Biggie. Sean's first album, No Way Out, further solidified his status in the music industry, earning him a Grammy Award and achieving platinum status seven times. Following this success, he would launch his own clothing line and invest in diverse industries, including television, media, and spirits. Over the years, Combs has been in several relationships throughout his life. Some of his most notable partners include Jennifer Lopez and Cassie, both of whom had a significant impact on him personally. He has also fathered multiple children with different women, including Kim Porter, Misa Hilton, and Sarah Chapman. Diddy's longest relationship was with Kim Porter, which lasted until 2007. Despite their breakup, they maintained a strong bond and co-parented their children together until her untimely passing in 2018. He began dating Cassie in 2007, and their relationship was known for its public ups and downs, ultimately ending in 2018 amid allegations of abuse. Despite his many accomplishments, the rapper has encountered various legal disputes and controversies throughout his career. Nevertheless, he has continued to grow his wealth, with Forbes estimating his net worth at $820 million in 2017. In 2016, the hip-hop star made headlines when he bought Carrie James Marshall's painting for an astonishing $21 million, setting the record for the highest price ever paid for a work by a living black artist. P. Diddy is also known for his all-black Gulfstream G550 private jet, which is estimated to have cost around $26.5 million and can accommodate up to 19 passengers. Furthermore, he owns the luxurious 178-feet superyacht Mariah, valued at $65 million. This this yacht has six cabins, two staterooms, a jacuzzi, a fully equipped gym, a wellness area, and multiple lounge seating options, which is served by a crew of 15. Diddy has always been extravagant and flashy. In 2016, during the Bad Boy reunion concert, he reportedly threw his iconic $500,000 diamond-encrusted necklace into a crowd. In 2023, numerous media outlets reported that P. Diddy earned $90 million, with his net worth estimated at around $800 million. However, However, despite this wealth, let's take a look at when things began to go wrong for the rapper. To better understand the situation, we need to rewind to 1991, after a celebration party at City College. Diddy faced nearly a dozen personal injury and wrongful death lawsuits from attendees and their families. He settled each of these cases for undisclosed amounts, but MTV reported in 2000 that he had offered $50,000 to one of the claimants. The same article indicated that he had spent around $750,000 on these agreements. Back in 1995, Bobby Lemon, a limousine driver, claimed that he was assaulted by the bodyguards of P. Diddy, who were present at a concert to ensure the safety of Mary J. According to Lemon, he was punched and kicked backstage as the bodyguards were clearing the area for the singer. As a result of this incident, a court ordered Diddy to pay Lemon $450,000 in compensatory damages and $2 million in punitive damages after he failed to appear in court. A representative for Diddy stated that he was unaware of the incident and subsequently appealed the ruling, which the court would reverse and throw out in 2004 after the appeal. For years later, P. Diddy found himself in legal trouble again when he was charged with felony assault. The incident involved an altercation with Steve Stout, an executive who was competing 
meeting with him, stemming from a disagreement regarding a video scene. Following the incident, the artist expressed regret for his actions, and Stout sought to have the charges dismissed on a $500,000 settlement. In the same year, television host Roger Mills leveled accusations against Diddy and his group, claiming they attacked him when he declined to sell a video interview. In this interview, P. Diddy was questioned about his alleged connection to the murder of Notorious B.I.G., which proceeded to file a lawsuit in 2001 and culminated in a trial in 2004. The jury ultimately ruled in favor of P. Diddy on all charges brought against him. However, we can't forget one of the most notorious incidents involving P. Diddy, which occurred in 1999 at a New York club shooting. He was taken into custody for allegedly having an illegal firearm after attending the event with his ex-girlfriend Jennifer Lopez and rapper Shine. During the night, a fight broke out and Shine reportedly shot a gun into the crowd. Witnesses claimed to have seen Diddy holding a gun too. Following the incident, the NYPD stopped their vehicle, where they discovered a firearm inside. Shine was arrested and received a 10-year prison and sentenced in 2001, later being deported to Belize in 2009. P. Diddy, on the other hand, was found not guilty of all charges, including weapon possession and bribery. Additionally, three people injured in the shooting filed a lawsuit against him, which was settled in 2011, but the court didn't share the settlement amount publicly. It was after this even in 2001 that Combs changed his stage name from Puff Daddy to P. Diddy, claiming that he wanted something new, after being found not guilty of gun possession and bribery. Troubles continued when his ex-girlfriend Kim Porter sued him in family court in New York for not supporting their three children. Her case was resolved, though it remained undisclosed to the public. In 2009, a court dismissed a lawsuit filed by a former associate of Sean, who was serving time in prison. The individual claimed that Combs owed him over $19 million for unreleased music by the legendary rapper Notorious B.I.G., born Christopher Wallace. This case involved approximately 17 minutes of vocal recordings and around 9 90 minutes of accompanying video footage. The associate argued that these materials rightfully belonged to him since he had financed B.I.G.'s travel and studio expenses, despite the absence of a formal contract. In response, Diddy explained that the delay in resolving the matter stemmed from the Los Angeles police designating the associate as a person of interest in the rapper's murder. On the night of B.I.G.'s tragic death, he and the associate were supposed to meet, but the associate failed to appear. The rapper expressed concern that the public might misinterpret the situation, especially regarding his company's financial dealings with someone under scrutiny for involvement in the murder. Ultimately, the lawsuit was dismissed when the court recognized the associate's pattern of deceitful behavior, revealing his background as a con artist with a long history of legal trouble. In 2017, a resolution was reached in a lawsuit involving photographer Gustavo Garces and P. Diddy. The case stemmed from an incident in 2011 outside the Dream Hotel in Miami, where Garces was involved in a confrontation with Combs' bodyguards while attempting to take a photograph. After several years of legal discussions, Garces agreed to a settlement of $35,000. In exchange, he released Diddy, his bodyguards, and their insurance company from any further liability related to the altercation. In the same year, Cindy Rueda, who previously served as P. Diddy's personal chef, filed a lawsuit against him, claiming intimate assault and harassment and unfair pay for her extensive working hours. Rueda accused her boss of requesting meals after intimate encounters and making inappropriate remarks. She was let go in 2016, and Diddy's spokesperson described her as a disgruntled former staff member. The lawsuit was eventually resolved with a settlement, but much detail was never disclosed to the public. Five years later, Diddy's nanny, Raven Wales brought more trouble to the rapper when she alleged that she was wrongfully terminated after disclosing her pregnancy in 2020. His spokesman called the suit a meritless shakedown to extort money from him. The case was dropped in April 2024 and cannot be refiled, but it is also unknown whether the woman received a settlement outside court. Now let's review the most recent accusations against Mr. Combs, which have emerged in the public eye and are more disturbing claims that some people may find hard to watch or listen to. Diddy's actual issue issues began in November 2023 when his former girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, popularly known as Cassie, launched a lawsuit with serious claims. She alleged that she was beaten, stomped on, and subjected to non-consensual forced intimacy by the music billionaire. Disturbing footage of him purportedly belittling his girlfriend was leaked on social media. A settlement was reached less than 48 hours after the lawsuit was filed, with rumors circulating that the amount was around $30 million. Cassie later released a statement, saying, 
saying, after years in silence and darkness, I am finally ready to tell my story and speak up for myself and for other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships. Several other women have stepped forward with similar accusations, including Aubrey O'Day and Kimora Lee Simmons. One woman, referred to as Jane Doe, alleged that she was drugged and assaulted by Diddy and two other men in 2003 when she was only 17 years old. In February 2024, Rodney King, also known as Lil Rod, filed a lawsuit accusing the troubled musician of inappropriate behavior on multiple occasions. He claimed he was forced into activities that involved exploitation and had to perform acts to satisfy P. Diddy and his entourage. Lil Rod also revealed that he was required to record much of what happened. According to him, the musician's private properties were often filled with drugs, individuals engaging in questionable activities, and even minors. Lil Rod further alleged that various high-profile figures were part of what Diddy called freak-offs. He also claimed that women were given alcohol mixed with drugs and that Young Miami, a female rapper and former girlfriend of Diddy, was involved in illicit activities. However, Young Miami has denied these accusations. The rapper and music tycoon has pleaded not guilty to three serious charges, including involvement in illegal exploitation, and is now facing accusations of assault and inappropriate behavior from 120 new accusers, 25 of whom were underage at the time of the alleged incidents. Despite these claims, Diddy's mother came to his defense, stating, My son is not the monster they are making him out to be, but the 54-year-old is currently awaiting trial after being denied a $50 million bail. But even when he is locked and under custody, yet many celebrities are still afraid to speak out against him. Let me know your thoughts about all these accusations. Dio, you think the rapper will defend himself this time with these overwhelming and serious accusations?